far short of expectations so far this season. That has something to do with a lack of shooting and perimeter defense, something to do with the fact that Anthony Davis has been hurt, and something to do with the fact that Russell Westbrook has had to adjust to his fourth team in four years. I keep saying it. He's never good in the first half. On Wednesday, head coach Frank Vogel sat Westbrook down the stretch, and the Lakers lost to the Pacers. Now people's ha people have been speculating about Ru what Russ thinks and how he feels. But as usual, you can see, our very own Adrian Wojnarowski has the facts, and there's Shanae Agumake. They both join me now from our L.A. studios. Shanae Agumake, um, well, first, Woj, let me start with you. You spoke to the man, Russell Westbrook himself. What did he tell you? Well, first, Max, uh, Russell Westbrook was disappointed to get benched Wednesday night in the final minutes of that loss to Indiana. He was surprised by it. But, listen, you know, he's trying to figure out with Frank Vogel, with the Lakers, how best to fit in. He believes that he's done everything asked of him this season. And, you know, and you just said it, Max, his fourth team in four years and you saw him get better in Washington, better in Houston as that year went on. He was injured in the bubble, and they didn't finish as strong. You know, but he's really just asking right now for some patience. The Lakers are going to get Anthony Davis back. They haven't played a ton of games together with Davis, LeBron James, and Russell Westbrook. Uh, but, but his view right now is, like, this team still he believes it's going to play its best basketball. And, and he is just a player right now, you know, trying to find the formula to fit in and ultimately knows he's going to be judged on winning and just hopes that, uh, you know, as they get this group back together, you know, they're going to start to find some chemistry, and, you know, and this will be a team, you know, that is going to improve over time. By the way, it's very predictable. I was thinking as soon as the trade got made, I'm like, they're not going to be any good in the first half. Russell, Everyone's going to say Russell Westbrook's the problem, blah, blah, blah. And in the second half, they'll be saying, is he the second half MVP? It happens every year. Fool me four times, shame on me. Woj, I've also, also always believed that Russell Westbrook gets a bad rap as a teammate, going all the way back to Oklahoma City. It makes me... Well, look, I think he cares about winning, right? But... He only knows one way, full speed ahead. Did he communicate to you that he's conscious of having a reputation as a less than ideal teammate? You know, I I've talked with Russell Westbrook a lot about that in the past. And I think that perception really does bother him because anybody who's played with him knows he's a tremendous teammate, really loyal, uh, really instructive to younger players. And listen, th there's two things here. There's being a great teammate and then their style of play. And I think people sometimes have to separate that. But, you know, the impact he had in Washington last year with that young team, the improvement you saw, and I think it's really important. He, he really puts value on being a great teammate. And, and I think sometimes people confuse style of play and, and how a player fits on the court with his impact around a group. And anybody who's been around Russell Westbrook knows, you know, that he is one of the best uh, in that area, and, and it does matter to him. Shanae, let me bring you in here, uh, because you are a star who knows a little something about fitting in with other stars playing professional basketball in Los Angeles. Please lay out for me what you'd like to see from, from Russ and the Lakers to get this season back on track. I think it starts with individually for Russell Westbrook. He has to limit turnovers. He leads the league with 188 in that category. But also, you know, that's the style of play change that you can control. Control what you can't control. That's what we always tell ourselves as athletes. Secondly, uh, collectively as the Lakers, they got to get back to playing defense. This is a team, when they won the championship, they were third in defensive rating. Also, last year, they were first in defensive rating. Right now, they're around 20th. So when you're looking about, oh, okay, is it Russ's fault? Is it Frank Vogel's fault? It's a collective issue when it comes to defense, and they'll get help when AD gets back. I think that right now, this is a great opportunity for Russell Westbrook and the Lakers. I mean, it, with all due respect to the Orlando Magic, they have an opportunity to go out there and play well and play hard and feel good about themselves because look who they have coming up next. They have the Heat. They have the Nets. They have the Sixers. And Joel Embiid has been a force as of late. So this game coming up, is a good confidence booster without AD. All right, defensively, we can be better. Russ, I can limit turnovers, and I can also get back to playing my brand of basketball.
That's a long road. By the way, that's a road trip that you're looking at against those good teams. Although <laughs> the Nets are playing with home court disadvantage. No KD and now no Kyrie, right? Woj, we know how fans get. And by the way, the Lakers, to me, when they put this together, are two, three, and D guys short, right? But if the fans got to choose, there'd be a million trades a day and 30 coaches fired a week. You'd never see your family, Woj. They want to keep Woj from seeing his kids. But organizations don't work like that. Do you think a change either on or off the court is on the table with the Lakers right now? Listen, you know, <clears throat> there's trades the Lakers can make around the edges. I don't know that there's a dramatic move that they can make, that they have the assets to do that. Listen, uh, you know, a lot of their picks are still tied up in the Anthony Davis trade with New Orleans. And, you know, listen, they moved out their assets in Kyle Kuzma, Montrez Harrell, uh, and KCP to Washington for Russell Westbrook. So, you know, so I think there are, again, some deals around the edges, and then maybe the buyout market post-trade deadline. But with the money they have tied up with certainly LeBron and Anthony Davis, and then Russell Westbrook, whose contract is, listen, you never say never, uh, but it doesn't seem to be uh, a market for that now. The Lakers really uh, might have been the last team ready, willing to take that on. So I think the, the help, the significant help for the Lakers is going to have to come from within. It's going to have to come from getting Kendrick Nunn back and, of course, uh, getting AD back, uh, hopefully, uh, at later this month. I got my eye on Taylor Horton Tucker. He has trade value, but his skills don't exactly fit with what they need right now to try to win a championship right now. I just have my eye on him. Like, what does he get you out there right before the deadline? Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.